severe weather comes in many forms, some more attention-grabbing than others. Coming out of a backloaded winter season, heavy snow has stolen headlines across the United States, but has caused headaches too. Stephen Clark oversees all state highways in Utah, a state with some of the worst spots in North America for avalanches, a mass of snow, ice, and rocks rushing down a mountain. They're starting up around 10, 11,000 feet elevation, and then once they reach the roadway, they're down around uh, 7,500, 8,000 feet of elevation. They travel that distance in about 40 to 50 seconds. Um, so they're really, really quick. Once there's a failure in a weak layer and the avalanche is in the slab forms and it starts sliding downhill, it's fairly instantaneous from when it goes to zero up to 70, 80 miles an hour. Even with winter in the rear view, Clark and his team know they're not out of the woods just yet. Avalanches can happen with five inches of snow and they can happen with 500 inches of snow. They don't really like to fit into check boxes um, because these situations can be so dynamic and they can change so differently over time. And that's what makes this job really difficult and really interesting. With less snow in the forecast, avalanches become less frequent, but that is no reason to let your guard down and ignore current conditions. You never want to go into avalanche terrain thinking that you're going to survive that avalanche. Um, Certainly, we go into, people go into avalanche terrain all the time and they can do it safely at certain times, but if you, you should never think that you're gonna get into an avalanche and survive that avalanche. From snow and ice to heat and humidity, or lack of in some cases. This time of year, heat can help to feed intense thunderstorms, but can also have a direct impact on your overall health if you ignore it. It is rather a silent killer. Um, the CDC has annual estimates of 600 to 700 people dying um, from extreme heat every year. That's Kimberly McMahon with the National Weather Service. She oversees programs to better educate the public about the effects of extreme temperatures. A huge difference between tornadoes and other forms of severe weather is you can see it. I think because people can't visualize it, it's not like a tornado, it's not like a hurricane. You, you can't say that word and have a visualization um, that it doesn't necessarily get the, it's not at the forefront of everyone's mind. Eventually your body could reach a point where it's no longer able to cool itself and that unfortunately could become deadly. Heat illness comes in three stages with each stage more dangerous than the last. Heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and finally heat stroke. Heat cramps can sneak up on you if you're not paying attention. Painful muscle cramps or spasms, usually in the legs or abdomen, um, and then heavy sweating. From there, heat exhaustion becomes far more serious. You'll have heavy sweating, weakness. Your skin will actually be cool and pale and clammy. Um, your pulse will be fast but weak, and then you'll probably be experiencing some dizziness, um, nausea, maybe even vomiting, and uh, possibly some fainting. If you push your body too far, the final stage of heat illness can be fatal if you don't act quickly, heat stroke. Symptoms will be a throbbing headache, confusion, nausea, dizziness, um, shallow breathing. Uh, your skin will actually be hot and red. Your pulse will be strong but rapid. Um, and you'll, there may be fainting or losing consciousness. Um, and last but not least, the, the term for heat stroke really means your body temperature is above 103 degrees Fahrenheit. Heat can impact more than just humans, but the land itself can become primed for another dangerous situation this season, wildfires. As we've seen, uh, especially in the last few years, these fires can just uh, expand considerably in such a short amount of time, um, given all the factors uh, with weather and things that we have. Robert Foxworthy has seen his fair share of fires in his 20 plus years as a California firefighter. But wildfires, especially in the Golden State, rank up there as some of the worst and most difficult to put out. Ultimately, the goal is the same, stopping it as small as possible. But the wildland side just throws in that kind of extra, extra pieces where the expansion can be bigger, it can get larger, and, and those um, efforts seem to be a little more difficult at times given location of fires and terrain and weather conditions and all the things like that. Look at that now. 
Last year, wildfires started late in the season in California, but once they got going, records began to fall. In total, more than 4.2 million acres burned across the state last year, almost the same size as New Jersey. In total for 2020, Cal Fire confirms more than 9,900 fires, more than 10,000 structures damaged or destroyed, and 33 deaths directly linked to wildfires. The season also featured the state's first ever Giga Fire, a fire so large it burned more than 1 million acres in total, an area larger than the entire state of Rhode Island. One fire was transitioning to its close and we had a new fire break. There were times where we were actually going without uh, a few days of rest and traveling directly to the next fire and engaging in active firefighting as soon as we arrived at scene and then transitioning into that next long duration, week-long campaign fire. While weather can set the stage for wildfires, Foxworthy says oftentimes the culprit is easy to identify. Human-caused fires are roughly 90 to 95% of the wildfires that we have. And those aren't necessarily intentional fires, uh, accidental fires. There's so many ways that we can get fires to start. Dry conditions, heat, and fuel, leaves and sticks on the ground, can take a spark from a car passing by to a massive state of emergency type fire. But then there is a roughly 10% chance fires are caused by something other than humans. The weather. It's obviously the weather conditions are the biggest factor, and that's what played a huge part in last year's fires and most of the, the large destructive fires that we've had. Uh, and I would say the number one factor that's caused some issues for us is wind. With winds rushing into the valleys of California, fires can not only rapidly expand, but can jump from one location to another much farther away just a basic fire front moving with wind can move about as fast as a person can walk at a brisk pace or run. And that's just the normal fire front. As we get these winds and the fire throws up embers, then we have these embers that will travel out of head of the main fire and start new, they wouldn't necessarily be, be new fires, but basically would, would pop up in other areas out in front of the fire, a mile, sometimes two miles ahead of the main fire. So then you have these new spot fires that are popping up out ahead. So it's not just thunderstorms, tornadoes, and hurricanes to watch out for this season, but the goal is always the same, regardless of what's on the way. Obviously our priority list goes, life and safety number one. That will always be our number one priority. For my radar, I'm Mike Linden. Follow my radar on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download my radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.